Hi, I'm Jackie Stapleton and welcome to Atoll TV. Today I'm here to help you with understanding the requirements of ISO 45001. If you like this video and want to see more great content, then click the subscribe button and the bell icon. It costs nothing to subscribe and you can unsubscribe at any time. In this video, I'm going to cover clause 614, planning action, which is the final clause under that overarching clause 6, planning. I'm going to break down this clause and turn it into something you can all understand. You'll then be able to apply this to your own organization system and understand what the requirements will look like for you. No more guessing. Keep on watching as I can show you just how easy this is. Before we get stuck into the actual clause requirements, I want to point out that this final clause is all about actually doing something with what you've learnt throughout the rest of clause 6. In fact, clause 614 even references these other clauses to help you to see where the requirements for action will come from. This means the standard ensures that it's not just all warm and fuzzy stuff, but that you actually have to do something with it. Okay. Let's get started. Clause 614 starts off with stating the organization shall plan actions to address these risks and opportunities, see clause 6122 and 6123, and address legal requirements and other requirements, which of course is clause 613, and finally prepare for and respond to emergency situations, which is clause 8.2. I don't really have to explain too much here because the clause is already pointing you in the direction of the other clauses to refer to. They've made it really easy for you. Basically, what they're saying is that there would be actions required as a result of meeting the requirements of clauses 6122, assessment of OHS risks and other risks to the OHS management system. 6123, assessment of OHS opportunities and other opportunities for the OHS management system. 613, determination of legal requirements and other requirements. And 8.2, emergency preparedness and response. And actually, just touching on that last one that refers to clause 8.2, the potential emergency situations could also have been identified as part of clause 6.1, actions to address risks and opportunities, as well as 6121, hazard ID. That's my opinion anyway. Now you just have to come up with a plan on how these actions will be implemented, which leads to the next section of this clause which states to integrate and implement the actions into its OHS management system processes or other business processes and evaluate the effectiveness of these actions. I love this. This is saying that your plan and your actions are to be a part of your OHS management system, its policies, procedures and processes. Again, this is not something that just sits in the corner. These actions become integrated into your business and they become just how things are done around here. To evaluate the effectiveness of the actions that are integrated into your OHS management system, you could use clause 9.1, monitoring, measurement, analysis, and evaluation, and even clause 9.2, internal audit, to monitor and determine the effectiveness. Even if this identifies improvements or non-conformances, that's what you actually want your system to do. Find where the gaps are and implement corrective action to always be improving. This clause does also state that the organization shall take into account the hierarchy of controls and outputs from the OHS management system when planning to take action. Again, this clause is pointing you in the direction of the related clause of 812, eliminating hazards and reducing OHS risks. This is stating that when planning your actions and integrating into your OHS management system, ensure that the actions you take follow the hierarchy of control, prioritizing the more effective controls first and where they can be applied. If you want more details on the hierarchy of control, be sure to check out the video for clause 812. 
And then finally, the last sentence of this clause states, when planning its actions, the organization shall consider best practices, technological options, and financial, operational, and business requirements. The actions that you take should align with what resources and operations the business already has in place. Look at what you already have in the form of processes and systems and integrate your actions within these first. Also understand what the normal practice is in your industry while also considering your access to technology and your own financial resources. These actions aren't meant to send you broke. Your financial, technological and operational resources will influence the level of action you take. Right, now that I've explained all of these requirements, can you see more clearly how you could action and demonstrate this within your management system and what it might look like for your business? While there is no specific documented information requirement stated for this clause, the requirement of integrating and implementing the actions into other business processes indicates that as an auditor, you will find these actions within the system as a whole. If you are implementing a system, be sure to use what is already created in the system and embed the actions within the system itself. It may not be necessary to create something brand new. Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Auditor Training Online is a recognized training provider and we know how it works in the real world. So we are confident that we can help you to make a change in your life and join the most sought after profession out there. Go to our website and enroll in our training to transform your work and industry experience into a recognized qualification and career. And also, don't forget to subscribe to Atoll TV and leave a comment or question as I truly do want to help you to join the best career out there with me.